full props to my parents for keeping everything as normal as they could. I feel everybody, uh, especially a, a star child or a celebrity child, craves for some kind of normalcy in their lives because they are always surrounded by so much chaos, like you said. So um, I feel it's very important for the parents to keep that balance. I mean, you have seen sides of, um, you know, our parents and uh, on through the media, through what you read, through what you see on TV, through what you see in films, which is always larger than life. So I think people kind of expect, oh, that to carry forward in real life as well. No, that is where real and real, uh, the difference between uh, real and real comes in. And honestly, uh, I don't know why people just think we've top code from some Asman or not. No, we haven't. <laughs> we are also very, very, our upbringings, uh, have, you know, try to be as normal as possible, I feel. and. Uh, I've had a lovely childhood, I, except for the parts where I was thrown into the limelight unexpectedly or given more attention that I craved for. Um, how old are you? 14. So at 14, like I, I think I had gone for some campaigning with my dad and everybody was treating me like I was some celebrity and asking for my autograph. And also when you're thrown into that at such a young age, you feel like, you know, oh my God, what have I you know, been pushed into? Uh, I don't want to be here. And um, that it does impact you in certain ways, but uh, it definitely depends on the parents to keep it as normal as possible for the children. And I'm really happy that she's written this book, uh, which gives our perspective out there so that you can know how we also feel. And, um, you know, yeah. I'm, I have to pipe you. in here and say that my first award that I ever won for my first <laughs> film, Kuch Kuch Hota, was given to me on stage by Sonakshi, yeah. who was baby Sonakshi then. Yeah, which and my I was dad like, again. I was like, like dude, this is really hysterical. <laughs> like, like a 12 year old is giving me my first film. So there are perks. Perks, uh, yeah, and, hello. And if you go online, there's a whole YouTube <laughs> video where I look like a house, because that's what I look like at that time. And Sonakshi is bespectacled and, and has spoken in Shudhi and said other near something and yeah. something and I was Which like my dad has taught me full yeah. tuition is given me so, before going up so on there stage. are some fun perks as yeah. well of but being no I'm sitting next to him and I'm like watching this award function like any one of us would be like really excited to be at an award show for the first time if you're not directly yeah. into it yeah. I mean I came from school home and my dad was like chalo award function mein jate hai. and then I went and I Saturday, he said, let's give award on the stage. Pe. And I'm like, hey, this, 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 So I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, but you see what happens, you know, with, with even, there is, there is always this, now, I've grown up now, my father was a film producer, which didn't qualify as being a movie star at all. You know, producers are always at the lowest rung of like everything. All we are expected to is be really nice to movie stars all the time. So all my father used to tell me is that if I say, yeh mera beta, I have to bend down and touch their feet. <laughs> So that was all I was told to do. It was like that. But it's but at, from, from an outside perspective, I've grown up with uh, Abhishek and Shweta, who are Mr. Bachchan's children, uh, Javits and uh, Hani, uh, Javits Saab and, and Hani Rani's kids, uh, Zoya and Farhan. All of them, at Abhishek used to have this big birthday bash, um, Shweta and Abhishek together, and everyone's celebrity kids would turn up. And that's where you realize that everyone actually has such a normal, organic upbringing. I've seen Mr. Bachchan dance on that dance floor, you know, with all the kids and hand out prizes. And I've seen his kids never win, you know, uh, because he was always perhaps looking at the flip side of it, you know. And so there is, there is so much normalcy, but the world outside, outside that house, there were like 2,000 people screaming. So it's like a dichotomy, right? Ishwarya, that while you're in the confines of your home, you have so much stability, like Sonakshi expressed, so much normalcy. But the moment you step out and you see, like in your father's case, I don't think any movie star in this country has seen, there are temples built on his name. People die and fall flat on floors, like when he walks. That is not normal. To be his daughter cannot be normal. And for you to kind of maintain your stability and look as poised as you are, I mean, kudos to you. And I'm sure the book also taps into those experiences. Like, your abnormality is on another level. What do you have to say? No, I think it's, uh, it's been quite the opposite in our case. Because um, here, you know, there was, a, like up in the north, uh, here when all the parents thought that they should send their kids abroad to keep them away from this whole uh, din and the whole uh, craziness, my parents opted to keep us in the same city, but secluded. It was very different. It was, uh, they wanted to keep us there. They didn't want to send us, but at the same time, they did not want this whole thing to, you know, kind of taint our way of looking at ourselves. So it was a very different childhood, and it was a very 
closed in a very uh, safeguarded childhood that we had. And it was not, our pictures were never uh, shown anywhere outside, you know. There was, there's even a, a chapter in the book about it, like, you know, so many people had so many assumptions why. People thought that we were not normal, there was something wrong, or we had, we were deaf, or we were blind, that's why they didn't want to show us out in the media. So they had their own assumptions about us because they were very closed about not letting us be seen anywhere outside. So I think that my mom did that for a reason because, you know, we used to go to the beach with our relatives, with an aunt or with a friend. No one, no one used to see us. No one used to stare at us. So she maybe thought at some level that that normalcy can be given only when they are not around. So I think it was... So you've never watched your father's film in one of those crazy movie hall experiences where when, as soon as your father comes on screen, people would stand up and start dancing and coming and garlanding his poster and doing all that. You've never seen any of that up close and personal? It was much, much, much later in my life. Much later. Yes, it was never when I was a kid because we used to only be taken for preview shows. It was never premiere shows. Okay. And uh, all the other movies that we were allowed to watch were only black and white films okay. and uh, old English classics. Oh so dear. yeah. Okay. So my my mom ran quite a tight show at home, so it was pretty. What about strict. what about the flip side of that as well? The overprotection. Yes, uh, I think. Does that also come into your core personality today? Do you think you somewhere also have to pay the price of being overtly sheltered? Yes, I think it's not. I think it it's not healthy, definitely. And uh, I don't blame my mother for doing it, doing yes. what she did at that point, because you know uh, maybe that was the only way she knew how to do it and you can't really blame her because my father was mostly not around he was doing seven films a year so he was pretty much working throughout the year he was never at home so maybe at some level she thought she was responsible and answerable to him if something went wrong so i think that was the reason why she did it and when i'm gro i'm bringing up kids today i have two sons and i know that i can see pretty much 60 percent of my mom uh, in me when I'm bringing them up. Because again, your husband is a movie star. Yes, and, and it's like history repeating itself. Yes, so it's it's pretty, uh, we, we tend to become overprotective by default. And the other thing common uh, about uh, celebrity children is the mother factor, the mere pas mahe factor. Um, I interviewed Jackie Shroff uh, for my talk show. He came on with Tiger. And Tiger said exactly what you said, and I'm sure Shunak, Sunakshi will have the similar thing to say. He said that dad was not at home a lot because he was filming right through. So there was high dependency, emotionally and otherwise, on the mother. Uh, is that the same, Sunakshi, for you? Like, uh, was there a, is absolutely. the mother a, a more of an influence because of your circumstance? Absolutely. I think because she was the one person who was always around. Uh, even though we knew that, you know, dad has this pr job to do and he's traveling all over and uh, he's doing it for us. Um, she was the one that was constant and always there. So I guess that is natural for us to fall back on the mother more than the father. But obviously, um, to compensate for their not being there, I, I read something from the book as well that we would, we would, they would overcompensate by bringing us so many presents and dolls and gifts and um, you know all of that so I and also I remember something very vaguely I think the first time when I went to Chennai uh, I had gone to their house and I remember like very I was very young vaguely I remember your mom was teaching a group of uh, kids at home and I found that so serene I found that like to be like almost like a gurukul and I found I thought to myself that you know wow it's so nice to be in an environment like that where you're just uh, you just left to be by yourself and learn at home and uh, I would have thought they were weird she's being nice no 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 it's honestly I, I remember even I asking my yeah. mom about it yes. like, I was like how yes. come they're all learning at home I, I, even I don't want to go to school can you teach me at home <laughs> look normal cannot be the thing you can nothing is normal yeah. You must understand what we're touching upon with this yeah. book and otherwise. Yeah. Like while you say that you had normal upbringings, yeah. but the fact that there's overprotection is not yeah. normal. I, I remember when my dad became a minister for the first time. Um, they obviously have Z security and I was in the sixth, fifth or sixth or seventh, I can't remember even, uh, standard. And they used to send these security guys with like these big guns and all with me as guards to school. And I had to put my foot down. It felt so weird. I had to tell my mom, I will not go to school if these men get out of the car before me and escort me to the gate. I will not. It's just embarrassing. 
So I had to like make that stop on my own because it's just so strange. Like everybody, even if you don't want to draw attention, no, they will look at you because of that. In so, good yeah. humor, I have to add that their mother did that. My mother went a step ahead and started her own school. She said, I don't want to send you anywhere. You study in my school. <laughs> well. So I think well, you're better off, trust me. <laughs> but there's also the other thing that one does touch upon is that Everybody else uh, whose parents do jobs that are not in media focus or in cele celebrity light um, don't necessarily know, like I don't know of somebody else's father who's a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, how they're doing in their professional status. This is one fraternity and in industry where global success is talked about all over and so is failure. And there is a ramification of that as well. Yeah. So when your fathers or your mothers fail uh, in the movies, they're also spoken about at length. Uh, Sonakshi, did you feel that, that sometimes that, that information of failure brought down the energy in the house? Or was you, were you also protected by that? I think we were definitely protected by that. And also, it was not as much as it is today. Today, we have the the press, the media, social yeah, media. Today, today, they're hammering it in your head it's, if something yeah, doesn't work. Right? If even you sneeze and everybody knows you've sneezed. Yeah. So at that point of time, it wasn't so extreme. So I think that information to reach us also would be filtered out by the time it reached us. It was very like PG-13 types like, OK, beta, this is what has happened and all. And you could tell by the mood of the parent, like mother, father. That something home. was a bit yeah. amiss. But, yeah, but that it something wasn't. is a bit amiss, but it'll be fine. It'll be OK. And that was what we would always be assured of because having been in the industry for, for so long, they knew of the ups and downs. You yeah. know, what, what goes down has to come up. Come up. And, and vice versa. Yeah, and vice versa. So, and um, and Ishwarya, the same with you? Was failure uh, also kept away from you whenever there was? I think yes. So in your extent. father's trajectory, I'm trying to figure out when that zone was. <laughs> <laughs> Very few moments of those. Yes, I think... Uh, you know, when there are fewer moments of such, they kind of make a bigger impact when you don't get to see so much of it. Yeah. And by God's grace, thankfully, yes, it's more exaggerated. It feels more out of the normal. So it, it kind of, you can feel the whole grimness in the, at home. You can feel it. Like she said, there would be a kind of uh, odd silence. There would be things that people would rather not talk about. They would not want to say anything about. And then... You know, just give, the only thing my mother used to say on days like that is just give space. It's, it's just not, if it's better not to talk about things, it's better to give space. And I remember as a child when I was around a group of lots of star kids, um, I was of course always, no doubt I have a talk show, because I was always obsessed by reading uh, gossip tabloids. Uh, Stardust and Cineblitz were always were magazines that I had access to. I remember that none of the other star kids even knew they existed. So obviously, it was kept away very diligently, yeah. whereas my mother was not doing the same. I was growing up, on, I was obsessed by the stardust. And for me, that was the gospel truth. What was written in those newspapers, those, those magazines, was I thought was definitely the reality, you know? Uh, it was, did that apply to both of you as well? Like, was all information beyond yes. kept uh, away? There were no magazines bought at home, whether Tamil or Film Fair or Stardust at that point. I mean, it was not done and a lot of channels were not floating sure. around yes not, <laughs> not there yeah i think even if there were like very rarely there would be um they, or they were just kept away from us or by chance if we happened to find one somewhere two three pages would be torn out from it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we don't know what was missing but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I get that because I've grown up around so many star kids. Yeah. It's amazing that actually, Eshwarya, you've written this book because I'm sure not just children of famous parents, but in two ways I think it's magnificent. One, because I think anyone who has been in this situation is going to deeply identify with the ethos of the book. And those who are not would get a mirror into the real truth behind what other people perceive to be as an exceptionally cushy existence. Uh, there are so many, as I said, deep dark days. There's so many, um, there's so many aspects that children and, as I said, spouses, siblings have to combat. And, uh, and the fact that you've kept it breezy and light and yet somewhere so soulful without pretending for it to be, I have to say as a debut author, Big kudos to you. Thank you so and, much. Um, and I feel your dad will be so proud 
with event the eventuality of this book. And I see so many interesting things happening with uh, with Star Children. When I see Shweta being an emerging columnist, besides, of course, the movie star children who are already doing so well, like Sunakshi, but even the ones who did not enter the film fraternity, and I see you, and I see even Twinkle now emerging, you know, on her own. There is so much interesting, I think that everyone's finding their mojo, perhaps a little later, but definitely it's a build up of so much within them. Yeah, I think uh, we're all c trying to, you know, kind of find where we belong. Right. And uh, for some it takes very little time, for some it takes a whole, whole years to, you know, find out where we belong, you know, because we can't just, um, I think anyone who does anything just because they need to do it will never work. You right. need to actually feel and be comfortable, comfortable in your skin and, you know, you need to feel good about uh, doing what you're doing. Right. You know, when I make a, when I'm in a film set, I always tell everyone it's like fish in water. It's just you feel so at home. You feel like you're at home because everyone there has either seen you grow up or they've, they're working with you or they've grown up with you. Or it's just that everyone's so familiar. It's not alienated because right. I don't think we could do anything else. It's just that someday you will, you will land up here, but in maybe different fields and aspects of it, but you can't right. see yourself away from it at all. Well, huge congratulations. And thank you, and thank thank you, you so for, much. for being the author of this book and thank you for bringing it to the world. And thank you, Sunash, Sunakshi, for your tremendous insight on the same. And uh, I think we should now officially, would you like to read the bit the gentleman was talking about? No, I think the book is pretty thin by itself. So I okay. just let people read it. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, these wonderful ladies um, who are with me on stage will now, I think, officially tear open this beautiful piece and a gem of a book. Uh, on behalf of uh, Crossword Bookstores, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Nitin Pandey, Head of Operations, who will give away a token of appreciation for the guests here. Hi, on behalf of Sonakshi and Aishwarya for sharing with us the insights of, of how is it to be a real celebrity child and Karan for uh, hosting the event and uh, uh, making them uh, share their insights with us. Thank you so much on behalf of Crossword. Thank you. The books.